Okay, we're gonna be looking at blood clotting or just the final mechanisms involved in your blood actually clotting because you don't want to bleed to death and then we might throw in something else at the end maybe with types of immunity depending on how much time we have left so blood clotting is very very interesting here you might have heard of a disease and there's something related to this sheep that you actually see right here but blood needs to clot it's very very important because if blood doesn't clot then you end up bleeding to death however you may have heard of things like blood clots causing bigger problems you don't want blood to clot too much because it can prevent your blood from actually flowing, give you a, a stroke or heart attack. But if it never clots, then if you get a small cut, you'll never stop bleeding. And uh, this is a very important set of mechanisms here. Um, basically what happens is when you get injured or cut in some way, uh, blood escapes. There are a series of reactions that happen. It's actually very complicated. You just have to know the final few reactions that end up with uh, the clot actually forming. But when your human tissue gets injured and blood escapes, you have uh, something in your blood called platelets, which are small cell fragments. They start releasing something called clotting factors, and that produces a chain reaction. It'd be nice if you were required to know this entire thing, but honestly, when you see the entire series of reactions, it's pretty daunting. And we're finding out more and more. It's really, really interesting here. The clotting factors then set off a series of reactions. So if you had to put this into a flow chart for now, it would be platelets pointed to uh, damaged cells releasing clotting factors pointed to a series of reactions, which we're going to outline in a second right here. So these are the final reactions in blood clotting. And there's a few vocabulary words here, fibrin, fibrinogen, thrombin, prothrombin. But... Um, the words, at least in this case, are kind of not so bad because it helps you understand how one thing uh, is necessary for the next to happen. So this is already talked about previously. We said we have clotting factors released by platelets. These clotting factors will stimulate a prothrombin activator, which will actually, prothrombin sounds like before thrombin. So the prothrombin activator is actually going to activate something called prothrombin activate prothrombin. Pro means before, and then once this prothrombin activator, think of it as some kind of protein that's linking to this protein, causes this to undergo a conformational change in shape to become an active version, and it becomes thrombin. So before it was called prothrombin, that's great, and it's inactive, then it goes to thrombin. So think of this like a series of domino chain reactions. And why would we want so many chain reactions in blood clotting? Well, think about this. You don't want blood, your blood to start clotting just for any little reason. It's almost like saying, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is how the government actually does this. But in all the movies that we watch, before a nuclear warhead gets launched, the president has a secret code. The vice president has a secret code. They all have secret codes. And uh, just to prevent one person from going crazy and actually launching the nuclear warhead, you've got three people that have to fully confirm that this is what needs to be done before we do something like that. So same thing here. You don't want your blood to start clotting just based on one little factor. You need it to be confirmed in several different places and so you have all these different steps that are necessary. Thrombin then helps to convert fibrinogen, which is a protein that is soluble. When it's soluble, uh, it's just dissolved in the blood. But when thrombin has been activated, because of these previous steps, now fibrinogen turns into something called fibrin. And fibrin now becomes insoluble. It comes out of the liquid and actually turns into these solid chains. So it's kind of like the diagram that you see here. These webs of uh, being formed are actually fibrin and they prevent the movement of blood cells and plasma. Um, for those of you, in, if you're looking at this from a, a protein structure point of view, Think about, think about it like this. Lots of negative amino acids are taken away by thrombin. So if thrombin, if before you had a lot of negative amino acids, then all of these molecules, because they're negatively charged, are repelling each other. Negative repels negative. So if you have a lot of negative amino acids that are around the surface of this protein, they're pushing each other away. Um, if, they, if that gets removed, then the negatives are not repelling each other as much and then you can actually have the positive and negative amino acids actually start 
coming together. And when they come together, they form larger molecules and that becomes fibrin, which is insoluble. And that is what makes up a blood clot and prevents you from dying. Factor nine, I'm not mentioning it here, but factor nine, factor IX, Roman numeral IX, that's the factor that people are missing when they have the disease called hemophilia. When they have hemophilia, it means your blood can't clot normally. And it's because one of these reactions that we're skipping over in this part here, one of these reactions here requires factor nine. And if so, if you have hemophilia, then you're missing that particular factor and your blood can't clot properly. Um, that's where this little sheep comes in here because the way that we fix that for humans is we actually get sheep to produce this protein factor nine for us and uh, it can be used to treat people with hemophilia. Finally, one quick question for you to look at. Uh, should be pretty easy considering we just went through this. A blood clot forms around a fibrous network of protein. What is the name of the protein? Here are your four choices. See if you can figure it out, pause the video. Here's the answer. All right, post any questions that you have. Thank you.